Hey everyone, welcome back to the Widowed Parent Podcast Live. I'm here today with Diana Cuddyback of Heartlinks Grief Center. Diana, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Yeah, well, I've been looking forward to talking to you. Uh, okay, so this is, of course, Children's Grief Awareness Month. And as we talk, it's Wednesday, so tomorrow is Children's Grief Awareness Day. Um, so it's been so great to talk to people who run programs like yours in different communities um, over the past couple of weeks here. So tell us, where, uh, where are you guys located? So we're in Belleville, Illinois, which is right across the river from St. Louis. And um, we actually serve a six county, officially serve a six county region here in Illinois that kind of rolls from very inner city to very rural. But Heartlinks serves whoever needs us. So we have people coming from outside that area and across the river in St. Louis and, and wherever. Yeah. And right yeah. now, very much wherever. Ah, okay. Well, that's a good, that's, so before we then talk about your in-person programs, because I know you used to do that, and once the pandemic ends, you'll presumably be able to do that again. But uh, for now, since we are in a pandemic, what kind of support are you guys able to offer? Well, we are able actually to do all our programs um, virtually. So, and, and we sort of have three areas of programming. We provide programming, um, doing counseling in office uh, for kids, families, and adults who've had a loss or are anticipating a loss. Mm -hmm. And then um, we do grief support groups that are, we have professionally facilitated peer support groups. And um, often, most of them are also supported by a volunteer mentor who's in the group as well. And then finally, we are, out doing outreach, which looks like a lot of different things. It depends on what a community needs. So it's everything from educating on grief and loss to responding when there's a, um, a sudden loss or during a lot of summers and sometimes during the year, we, put, we work with other agencies and do programming that's really focused on um, teaching people how to, how to deal with grief and loss and how to have extra coping school, you know, skills and techniques and get people talking about grief and loss. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's, all, that's what we do. And we're doing all of that. Some of it, a little bit, so we've been able to do in person, but most of it we're providing virtually right now. Ah, okay. So if somebody is in your area and they are in need of grief support right now, it sounds like they should not hesitate to reach out and thinking that maybe there's nothing or they just have to wait or something like that. No, we've got it going on um, and we're able to, my counselors are all working virtually and are able to see people one-on-one -on -one or with families and we're running our groups that way as well. So, um, and on and off when it, when it's been okay, more okay in this area, then we have even done some in-person activities. Unfortunately, right now it's not great here. So we're kind of uh, mainly focused on all our virtual stuff, but we even got to do a little bit of outreach this summer, which was, it was awesome to yeah. be out yeah. with people, yeah. even all yeah. masked up. It was, it was great, you know? Right, right. So. terrific. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm glad to hear you're able to, to keep serving the community now, and eventually, presumably, we'll get out of this pandemic and we'll get back to normal. So tell us about what you do in normal times. Like, what are your programs? Is it a monthly sure. program or how does, kind of, how do things work? I know I almost have to think of it in three chunks. So if I was going to talk to you about our support groups, sure. we serve a lot of different, we have a lot of different groups. We have a family night where we have six or seven groups that run all at once and that happens monthly. And so while adults are in their group, kids are in their group. Um, we have a group for parents who've lost their partner. We have a group for people who've lost a child in, um, and we are a part of Compassionate Friends. And then we have groups for kids, Little Bears. We have an elementary group. We have a preteen and a teen group that run on that one night. So we try to make it one-stop shopping because we have people coming from all over. And when you're grieving about the last thing you need to do is show up somewhere over and over again. Mm. So um, we have that. And then we have other groups as well. So we have a group called Partner Loss Plus. It's a group for adults who've lost their partner early, but maybe they are done with parenting. And um, we have an addiction loss support group and some group for older adults that are in some of the senior centers. And we have a couple of other things that are going that are that are actually got birthed during the pandemic as virtual groups. And um, so anyhow, that's that piece. And then we also 
people come to us for counseling, it is, you don't have to. I mean, you can use counseling services, but you don't have to use counseling mm -hmm. services. And it is a place where we, we work with people before and after a loss. We are actually smart of a, a part of a small nonprofit community-based hospice called Family Hospice. And so it's a place where we're able to serve the community and a lot of people who may not ever use hospice but need support around issues um, about trying to manage before they lose a person. Um, but we do, most of our counseling is post-loss. And then we have specialized in trauma counseling because unfortunately in our area, just because of what a diverse area it is and how it runs from very different uh, counties and socioeconomic areas. We have a lot of there's trauma loss in this area. So we do some specialized trauma counseling. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's good to know. And that's, and that's groups, and then we do outreach, so. Uh, okay, okay. Well, I'm glad to know that you guys do have uh, some special focus and, and offerings in the trauma area, because I, I think that it's, sometimes it can be hard to find, you know, you find a counselor, but then maybe they're specializing in a different area, or trauma isn't their, their background of experience. Um, yeah, what we found is just that we were getting more and more people coming with grief issues, but, you know, you <laughs> when you have trauma and grief, it, it, sometimes the trauma is so big, you, you can't get to the grief pieces. So all of our counselors are EMDR trained, um, so which is pretty intensive training in, in, and then a number of other trauma therapies. But it's a kind of therapy that's expensive hmm. and um, not usually or not always covered by insurance. We around here don't use insurance. So HeartLinks is a, we serve you regardless of your ability to pay. We don't charge for our services. We, we offer opportunity for people to make a donation, but um, we just want people to get the services. And so that's why we ended up adding more counseling because we started off doing the, the groups, but found people needed not only groups, but, but something else sometimes as well. Yeah. So. That's terrific. And, you know, one of the things that I didn't realize before I got involved in this whole world, I mean, you're talking about counseling and insurance and sometimes um, insurance, I think, like grief isn't considered a thing that insurance pays for, which sounds crazy to me as a person outside the system, right? But that it's not a diagnosis and therefore right. they, it's not something that they raise their hand to pay for. Well, that's absolutely right. And one of the kind of our founding principle, HeartLinks has been around for 23, almost 24 years now. And we just believe that off the start, grief is more a problem in living and not necessarily a mental health problem. It may be, and you may come to grief with already having dealt with mental health issues, but we don't diagnose, we don't give any, and that's why we don't use insurance here because I don't want to have to diagnose somebody. I want them to be able to, to grieve as they're going to grieve and not give it a label. Mm, and get so, that support. Um, yeah, to get that support. But all our therapists are, I mean, they're therapists. They can go do counseling somewhere else and diagnose and charge insurance, but we don't, we don't do that here. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you for telling us how that works. Uh, I think I forgot to ask what age of kids, like starting at what age can kids come into your programs? Um, any age. So it's just how we work with them changes. Our youngest group starts at about three. I mean, we've had a two-year-old and that is appropriate for it. We don't have real strict age guidelines just because we try to do visits with all our families before they get into programming. And that way we kind of understand what's going to work for them and not. So um, two, three mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. age and then on up. Um, and we have no upper end, which is a little bit unusual for some of the groups that um, just do kids and families, but we do over, I, I guess, uh, the biggest chunk of who we see as kids and family, but mm -hmm. there's about a third of the people we see are, are adults that are not coming with a child. They're just coming on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there any kind of criteria or, uh, you know, as far as like um, type of loss or length since your loss? Now, you know, grief is grief. And if you want to come seven years after your loss because it's making an impact in your life, then you come. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and if you want to come the day after, I'm going to talk to you and say, well, let's think about if group's going to be the best thing. But, you know, I, I have to rely on, on people's need to bring them here. And no, we don't, we don't have any rules, which mm -hmm. is, 
you know, Heartlinks has been kind of creating its zone in the way it worked as we went along. And we just found that one person's way of grieving is not another person's and one person's timing is not another person's. So all of our groups are ongoing. Once in a while, we'll do something that's time limited or we'll do an event like usually in the, um, in the early spring, right, usually the weekend before Valentine's Day, we do an event for our partner loss group and we, we put on a uh, retreat for them. We take care of their kids downstairs away from them and we spend the whole day just kind of taking care of them, doing some grief work, but also making stuff and laughing and dealing with and eating and feeding them. And, um, and we do other events. We have a survivor suicide event coming up this weekend uh, in conjunction with American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. But we try to also have events and opportunities that come up through the year. And you know what we find with doing ongoing groups is that people come for as long as they need and then sometimes they come and check back in because, mm -hmm. you know, they were eight when their mom died, but when they're 13 and at towards the end of middle school, they're really thinking about it again. Mm -hmm. So they check back in and that's, and that's healthy and normal. And, um, and a lot of times they'll check in at, at events that we do on a yearly basis. So for me, mm -hmm. I get to see kids, you know, go from little to to tall and uh, go from little kid to driver. And I just feel old and enjoyable <laughs> to, to watch the process. Yeah. So. Yeah. How wonderful. And then another piece of it is too, that um, many of our adults and some of our youth uh, go through volunteer mentor program and they become a part of back into helping what we do. Hmm. Because, you know, me as a, therapist can sit in a group and say something but if I have a 16 year old guy who says to an eight-year-old boy you know my dad died um, and he's a cool guy that's doing okay there's such power in that yeah um, and for that young man who's 16 who can see where he's come from and to there's power in that mm. and it builds a community that's for me just the best part of what we do is creating community and saying Grief is a normal thing. Let's do it together and let's be together while we do it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Well, terrific. Well, it's been so great hearing about your programs and what you guys are doing. Uh, tell us where can people find Heartlinks if they want to um, call you or, or get connected with your programs? They can get connected on our website at myheartlinks.com. We're on Facebook at Heartlinks. I think it's Heartlinks um, at Family Hospice. But if you Google Heartlinks, you will find Heartlinks. And we have some cool new programs, uh, one in particular called Friends Who Get It for young adults, that age group from, from 18 through 30 who, who really have a lot of losses. And so they're meeting virtually and in connection virtually, and they're using the Actively Moving Forward app, but also yeah. just a part of our program. But anybody is willing, is, is welcome to come to that group. Um, and it's a way for people to kind of hang out with people who get it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having us on. Yeah. Well, Diana, thank you so much for speaking with me today.